Best Garlic Recipes Garlic, whether pickled or pureed, baked or boiled, is the cornerstone of cuisines the world over, featuring in everything from Spanish soups to quince aioli. Baked garlic and shallots with fino this is perfect for the spring, when the new season's garlic arrives. Its soft cloves, encased in sweet papery casings, are gentle in flavor, and the heads can be roasted and eaten whole. They go beautifully with roasted shallots. Serve on grilled bread, with a spoonful or two of goat's curd, or as an accompaniment to a simple roast chicken. Serves 4. 4 garlic bulbs 8 banana shallots 5 lemon thyme sprigs, or ordinary thyme, 4 bay leaves 600 ml fresh chicken stock 180 ml fino sherry 50 g unsalted butter, in pieces 50 g parmesan, freshly grated salt and black pepper. 1. Preheat the oven to 180 C, 350 F, gas mark 4. Slice the garlic bulbs in half horizontally and place in a roasting tray. Have the shallots, slip off their outer skins and add to the garlic. Season with salt and pepper, then scatter over the lemon thyme and bay leaves. 2. Bring the chicken stock to the boil in a small pan, then pour over the garlic and shallots. Drizzle over the sherry. 3. Cover the tray tightly with foil and roast in the oven for 40 minutes. Remove the foil and return to the oven for a further 15 minutes, until the shallots and garlic are golden brown and the stock has reduced down and thickened. Add the butter and parmesan and stir to combine. Taste, adjust the seasoning, and then serve. Mellow garlic puree The longer you cook garlic, the mellower the flavor. If you want more of a punchy puree, only cook for 7 minutes. You can serve this puree with seared pigeon breasts, lamb's kidneys or a sliver of salted anchovies on toast, or with lamb instead of mint sauce. Serves 4. 3 garlic bulbs, peeled about 200 ml milk 1 tablespoon extra virgin olive oil a few drops of sherry vinegar, optional, salt and black pepper. 1. Place the peeled garlic in a small saucepan, and cover with the milk. Simmer the garlic for 10 minutes, until it is just soft. Add olive oil and salt and pepper. 2. Strain and reserve the milk. Now, with a handheld blender, puree the garlic with the 6 tablespoons of milk. When smooth, add the sherry vinegar, if using, and check the seasoning. Adapted from Moro the Cookbook, by Sam and Sam Clark, Ebery Press. Quince aioli This fruity variation of aioli goes especially well with pork and lamb. It's best to use a food processor or mixing bowl when you're dealing with something as dense as membrillo, but if you're just using a pestle and mortar, melt the membrillo down first with a tiny bit of water over a low heat. This will make it easier to incorporate the oil. Serves 4. 1 garlic clove 250 g membrillo, quince paste, 150 ml oil, equal parts extra virgin olive oil and sunflower oil, lemon juice to taste salt and black pepper. 1. Crush the garlic with a little salt in the pestle and mortar. 2. Transfer to a food processor or bowl, and add the membrillo. Blend, and slowly add the oil in a thin stream, resting occasionally, until all the oil is incorporated. Add more salt, pepper and lemon juice to taste. Moro the Cookbook, by Sam and Sam Clark, Ebery Press. Caramelized garlic tart with an almond flour base. Sweet caramelized garlic and butternut squash combine with creamy goat's cheese and the aniseed flavors of tarragon to make a delicious, uniquely flavored tart with a twist, we use ground almonds to make a nutritious and gluten-free crust. Serves 4 to 5. For the pastry 375 grams ground almonds 1 teaspoon sea salt half a teaspoon bicarbonate of soda half a tablespoon maple syrup 30 grams butter, soften 2 eggs. For the filling 250 grams butternut squash, skin on, deseeded 3 medium bulbs garlic, cloves peeled 30 grams butter 1 tablespoon maple syrup 1 tablespoon cider vinegar 2 eggs 7 tablespoons full fat yogurt 60 grams mature cheddar, grated 70 grams goat's cheese 3 teaspoons chopped tarragon salt and black pepper. 1. Preheat the oven to 180 C, 350 F, gas mark 4 and roast the butternut squash in the oven for 40 to 50 minutes, cut side up, until cooked through and tender. 2. Mix the pastry ingredients together and roll into a 3 mm thick disc between two pieces of parchment paper. Line a 24 cm ceramic tart dish with the almond pastry, trimming away the excess. Line with greaseproof paper, fill with baking beans and put into the fridge for 20 minutes. 
3. Bake for 10 minutes, remove the beans and bake for 10 minutes more. Set aside. 4. Meanwhile, put the garlic in a small pan with a few tablespoon of water. Simmer for a few minutes until almost tender. Add the butter, increase the heat and cook until the water has evaporated and the garlic is starting to brown. 5. Add the maple syrup, cider vinegar and a pinch of sea salt and simmer for 10 minutes, until most of the liquid has evaporated and the cloves are coated in dark syrup. 6. Peel the skin from the squash, chop into 2 cm pieces and arrange in the tart base. Whisk the eggs, yogurt and grated cheddar together with a pinch of salt and a few good grinds of black pepper and pour over the squash. Advertisement. 7. Scatter pieces of goat's cheese and caramelized garlic over the tart, drizzle over the syrup and sprinkle with the tarragon. 8. Reduce heat to 170 C, 325 F, gas mark 3 and bake the tart for 30 minutes, until it sets and the top goes golden brown. Eat warm or at room temperature with a crisp seasonal salad. Recipe supplied by Hemsley & Hemsley. Tofu steak cooked with a combination of garlic and leeks and dressed with bano soy sauce, this dish has the most amazing aroma. Serves 4. For the bano soy sauce 100 ml mirin 300 ml soy sauce 10 cm piece kanbu seaweed, wiped of any salty deposits. For the tofu steak 600 g soft, silken tofu 8 garlic cloves, finely chopped 4 to 5 tablespoons plain flour 3 to 4 tablespoons sunflower or vegetable oil salt and black pepper. To serve 25 g fresh ginger, finely grated 50 g spring onion, finely sliced a small handful of katsuobushi, dried fish flakes, optional. 1. To make the bano soy sauce, bring the mirin to the boil in a small saucepan, then reduce the heat to low and cook for a further 2-3 to three minutes to burn off the alcohol. Remove from the heat and add the soy sauce and kanbu. Leave to cool, then refrigerate. 2. Drain the tofu and cut into 4 pieces, wiping off any water with a paper towel. 3. Season the tofu on both sides with salt and pepper, then cover with the garlic. 4. Lightly coat the tofu pieces in flour. 5. Heat the oil in a frying pan and, when hot, add the tofu, cooking until it is crispy and browned on both sides. 6. Garnish with ginger and spring onions and top with a sprinkling of katsuobushi, if using. Dress with the bano soy sauce to taste. Any soy sauce that's left over will keep in the fridge in an airtight container for up to 3 weeks. Roasted garlic and butternut squash hummus with goat's cheese The base of this hummus is made of butternut squash, which creates a sweet, light dip that is complemented by two sweet and aromatic roasted garlic bulbs. Serves 4 to 6. A small, medium butternut squash, 700 to 900 grams, 4 tablespoons olive oil, plus extra to rub on the squash and garlic and to serve 2 garlic bulbs, about 25 to 30 cloves lemon zest from 1 half lemon and a generous squeeze of juice 2 tablespoons tahini 10 sprigs of fresh thyme, leaves torn from stems a handful of flat leaf parsley, finely chopped 50 grams creamy goats cheese salt and black pepper. 1. Preheat oven to 200 C, 400 F, gas mark 6. Cut the butternut squash in half and remove the seeds. Rub it with olive oil and a pinch of salt and pepper. Bake in the oven for 45 to 60 minutes, depending on size. 2. Split the garlic into individual cloves but keep the peel on. Rub them with a little olive oil and bake for around 20 to 25 minutes beside the squash. Keep an eye on the garlic cloves, they should be tender and golden, not hard and burned. 3. When everything is done, scoop out the flesh of the butternut squash and peel the garlic cloves. Place both in a blender and add the lemon zest and juice and tahini. Pulse until the garlic and squash are well combined. Transfer to a bowl. 4. Add half the chopped parsley and season to taste with salt and pepper. 5. Serve with crumbled goat's cheese, a splash of olive oil and the rest of the fresh herbs scattered on top. Indonesian Garlic Fried Chicken Of the many versions of ayam goreng fried chicken in Indonesia, this is the most delicious, crispy and toffee brown on the outside, sweet and succulent on the inside, thanks to its unusual pre-frying marinade of garlic and palm vinegar. Serves 4. 
One whole chicken, 1.4 to 1.6 kilograms, cut into 10 pieces or 1.4 kilograms chicken wings, thighs and or drumsticks 8 garlic cloves, peeled and smashed 250 milliliters palm cider or rice vinegar 1 and a half teaspoons sea salt peanut oil, for frying. 1 rinse the chicken under cold water, drain well and pat dry with a paper towel. Set aside. 2 in a large bowl, combine the garlic, vinegar and salt. Add the chicken and combine well. Cover in cling film and leave to marinate in the fridge for 1 to 2 hours, stirring once or twice to ensure the marinade coats every piece. 3. Remove the chicken pieces from the marinade and pat them thoroughly dry with a paper towel, gently squeezing each piece to remove excess liquid. Set aside. 4. Add oil to a depth of 2.5 cm in a 30 cm frying pan and place over a medium-high heat until hot but not smoking. Gently slide as many of the chicken pieces into the oil as will fit without touching, you'll probably need to fry the chicken in two batches. After about 10 minutes, when the chicken has turned deep golden brown and crispy, turn it over and continue to fry, it should take 20 to 25 minutes in total. Test by poking a fork into the thickest portion and pressing down on it, the juices should run clear, not pink. 5. Remove the chicken pieces and let them drain on a wire rack or paper towels for a few minutes before transferring to a serving platter. Serve immediately. Korean pickled garlic manul jangaji is a traditional side dish in Korea. The garlic cloves are first soaked in a vinegar brine for a few days, before being pickled in a soy brine. Through this two-step process, the garlic loses much of its pungent bite and becomes slightly sweet and tangy. Makes one large jar. 500 grams fresh garlic, about 8 to 9 whole heads. For the vinegar brine 150 milliliters vinegar 1 tablespoon sea salt 400 milliliters water. For the soy brine 150 milliliters soy sauce 60 milliliters vinegar 3 tablespoons sugar 400 milliliters water. 1. Separate the garlic cloves. Soak in hot water for 30 minutes or longer, which will help the skins come off easily. Peel and remove the root ends with a small knife. Rinse and drain. Add to a large sterilized pickling jar. 2. Stir the vinegar brine ingredients together until the salt has dissolved and pour enough over the garlic cloves to submerge them. Secure the lid and leave to stand at room temperature for 5 to 7 days. 3. Bring the soy brine ingredients to a boil, and gently boil for 5 minutes over a medium heat. Allow to cool completely. 4. Drain the vinegar brine from the jar. Pour the cooled soy brine over the garlic cloves. Make sure all the garlic cloves are submerged. Close the lid tightly and leave to stand at room temperature for 2 weeks. The garlic can be eaten at this point, but it will taste better as it matures. Refrigerate after opening. The garlic cloves will keep for a few months. This is a noble and sustaining soup found throughout Spain, especially in Castilla-La Mancha. Despite regional variations, the main ingredients of this soup are always the same, garlic, eggs, bread and paprika. Serves 4. 4 tablespoons olive oil 4 to 5 large garlic bulbs, broken into cloves with skin kept on 100 grams cooking chorizo, cut into little pieces 1 teaspoon fresh thyme leaves half a teaspoon sweet smoked Spanish paprika 1 liter chicken stock 4 eggs 8 slices ciabatta or sourdough bread, toasted and torn into rough pieces salt and black pepper. 1 Heat the oil in a saucepan over a low heat. Add the garlic and fry gently for 15 to 20 minutes, stirring often, until the skins are golden brown and the flesh is soft. Remove with a slotted spoon. 2. When slightly cool, squeeze out the sweet garlic flesh by hand, discarding the skins, puree and set aside. 3. Meanwhile, add the chorizo to the pan and fry until crisp and caramelized. 4. Add the thyme, fry for a few seconds, then add the pureed garlic. Stir well, add the paprika and pour on the chicken stock. Bring to a gentle simmer and season to taste. 5 About 2 minutes before serving, poach the eggs in the soup and add the toasted bread. Taste once more and serve immediately. Moro the Cookbook, by Sam and Sam Clark, Ebery Press. Green Garlic and Scapes Risotto If you live in a green garlic and scape less society you can use a bulb of normal garlic and a leek instead of the scapes, stems. Serves 2. 
40 grams butter 1 tablespoon olive oil 1 shallot, finely chopped 4 rashers pancetta, thinly sliced 1 bulb of new, young garlic, cloves peeled and halved lengthways 100 grams arborio rice 500 milliliters chicken stock half a head of romaine lettuce, chopped 1 bunch garlic scapes, or 1 leek, finely chopped juice of 1 half a lime 75 grams frozen green peas 4 tablespoons parmesan, grated. 1 in a saucepan melt 2 thirds of the butter with the olive oil. Add the shallot, pancetta and green garlic cloves. Cook for about 5 minutes without allowing them to color. 2 add the rice and stir thoroughly for a minute or so. Now add the warm stock, a ladleful at a time, stirring in between and allowing a few minutes for the rice to cook before adding the next ladleful. After about 10 minutes add the chopped lettuce and stir. 3 Once the lettuce has wilted, add the chopped scapes or leek. 4 Add the lime juice and stir in the peas. Check the rice and add a little more water if needed. Cook for a few minutes more, stirring continuously, until the peas are hot and the rice is tender. 5 Add the cheese and the remaining knob of butter and serve immediately. News is under threat. Just when we need it the most. Millions of readers around the world are flocking to The Guardian in search of honest, authoritative, fact-based reporting that can help them understand the biggest challenge we have faced in our lifetime. But at this crucial moment, news organizations are facing an unprecedented existential challenge. As businesses everywhere feel the pinch, the advertising revenue that has long helped sustain our journalism continues to plummet. We need your help to fill the gap. We believe every one of us deserves equal access to quality news and measured explanation. So, unlike many others, we made a different choice, to keep Guardian journalism open for all, regardless of where they live or what they can afford to pay. This would not be possible without financial contributions from our readers, who now support our work from 180 countries around the world. We have upheld our editorial independence in the face of the disintegration of traditional media, with social platforms giving rise to misinformation, the seemingly unstoppable rise of big tech and independent voices being squashed by commercial ownership. The Guardian's independence means we can set our own agenda and voice our own opinions. Our journalism is free from commercial and political bias, never influenced by billionaire owners or shareholders. This makes us different. It means we can challenge the powerful without fear and give a voice to those less heard. Reader financial support has meant we can keep investigating, disentangling and interrogating. It has protected our independence, which has never been so critical. We are so grateful. We need your support so we can keep delivering quality journalism that's open and independent. And that is here for the long term. Every reader contribution, however big or small, is so valuable.